take a look. Thank you very much. Yes, go on. Uh, thank you, Lajja. Th thank you. So uh, I'll be sharing uh, uh, the the new kid on the block, uh, so as to say, the various types of extended depth of focus IOLs uh, and something that is being touted as the next replacement to monofocal IOLs in the coming uh, years to come. I acknowledge the support of uh, Dr. Raja and the team members at Raghudipai Hospital, and we do receive research grant support from Alcon Laboratories. Uh, extended range of vision came initially quite a few years back and the past experience of those generation of uh, so-called extended depth of focus IOLs, which were basically low ad multifocal IOLs, have been very mixed. Uh, and in particularly, not only were mixed in terms of the predictability of visual outcomes, but the main problem from which we were trying to run away from multifocals, the dysphotopsia they were still occurring at quite a high frequency with those kinds of uh, extended depth of focus IOLs because they were mainly based still on the diffractive IOL technology. Uh, with improving trifocal technology uh, uh, and good experience with that, the question is uh, why do we even now need to go back to EDOF IOLs uh, considering the pleasant and happy experiences that all of us have been sharing with the current generation trifocal. So I think extended range of vision still has a very, very important role. With increasing life expectancy, uh, there is also an increasing period of very active professional life. Uh, the retirement ages are getting postponed right from government, central government to private practice. Uh, and gadgets of all kinds, phones, screens, are taking over more and more and are going to increase uh, over the period of next uh, few years. And not all patients are suitable for trifocal IOLs, as we found out in the previous talk. But there's not a single patient who comes to get operated and who doesn't wish that he would, you know, everyone wishes that they want to see everything without glasses as if they were 30, 25, 30 years of age again. So what exactly is an EDOF IOL? So the, the FDA guidelines for the EDOF IOL says that any, any IOL which gives a focus of more than half diopter than a monofocal control uh, can be considered to give an extended depth of range of vision. Uh, and of course, this applies to near as well as intermediate and that the distance vision should be non-inferior to the monofocal control. An ideal EDOF lens would ideally mean that when you focus for intermediate, it should provide a sharp focus at intermediate. When you focus for near, it should provide a sharp focus for near or in distance, so on and so forth. Of course, that is impossible to achieve with any kind of optics. And so therefore, from the several so-called EDOFs that, that have come up over the year, the popular ones being the small aperture IOLs, uh, particularly the AccuFocus, uh, they definitely help to increase the depth of focus on the eye, but they dramatically reduce the amount of light entering the eye, and therefore they are recommended only for unilateral implantation. And like I discussed, the low at diffractive multifocal IOLs, which were used as EDOF IOLs, had the same visual disturbances like the bifocal IOLs, and therefore did not become popular. And therefore everyone wants something which is which has something which is not related to diffractive technology. And I think now several companies are coming up with such modifications because this is the end result that we want. This is something that we want uh, a halo profile or a dysphotopsia profile which is very similar to a monofocal IOL compared to the existing EDOFs. So I think the major advantage with the newer generation EDOF IOLs uh, and our experience has been mainly with the VVT, but I'm sure some of the other companies are coming up with similar uh, mechanism IOLs, is that there are no dysphotopsia. So as far as the dysphotopsia profile goes, the percentage of patients uh, complaining of glare are a or dysphotopsia are as good or as low as any monofocal IOL. Uh, the disadvantage, of course, being that this is, this is not a magic lens, so it doesn't give you everything at all distances. Uh, and there will be need for reading glasses ranging from 0.75 to 1.5 diopters. And there will be need, uh, there will be some marginal loss uh, in dim light, particularly for reading. Uh, so where do we place it in our practice? So, so first of all, our evaluation doesn't change. So our evaluation criteria do not change. Uh, and still, uh, I would still recommend that healthy eyes are still the best candidates for any form of extended depth of range of uh, focus IOLs. 
uh, there are th th these are some case scenarios that I would like to share. So this was a 56 year old male. He's a senior manager in a factory. Uh, and uh, from where we stay, Ahmedabad, uh, uh, anywhere from 30 to 50 kilometers is the industrial zone outside the city. So he works uh, as a senior manager in a factory, which is 30 kilometers on the outskirts of Ahmedabad. He's a myop since a young age. Uh, and his primary reason why he has come to us is that he has glare while night driving. And in fact, it's been become so bothersome that he has stopped driving himself uh, to the factory and he's now started carpooling with his colleagues so that he drives in the morning and while coming back, his colleague drives back home. His best corrected visual acuity was 618 uh, and he had nuclear sclerosis along with cortical component. So if we objectively analyze this patient, his field, his work is mainly supervision of the field force. So he's himself not actually doing any, you know, technical work. Uh, his main work includes supervision, checking daily logs, driving back to the city through country roads. By country roads, I mean any roads which are typically outside the city are usually single lane, uh, do not have dividers and do not have street lights, which means there will be a lot of light related issues, uh, almost like a highway driving. He wishes less dependence on glasses, but he does not want to continue having someone else to drive for him back home. He doesn't like that. So he doesn't want to stop coming back home on his own in his own car. So we discussed the options that glare and night driving being his primary concern, trifocal may not be the best option for him. Uh, and therefore we discussed the option of a deed of IOL VVT in this case, and we considered bilateral VVT with uh, target e-metropia for both eyes. And we did warn him that you will need glasses for reading. Uh, uh, they are likely to be of less magnitude compared to a monofocal IOL, but you will need glasses for reading. Uh, and this was at post of one month after the second eye surgery, binocular, uncorrected, good visual acuity, uh, right eye had a minimal amount of, sorry, left eye had a minimal amount of residual astigmatism. His binocular intermediate uh, visual acuity was uh, N8 and binocular at 40 centimeters was N8 comfortable without anything extra. Uh, N6, when you force him in, in your optical chair with a lot of bulb light coming on top of it, uh, but N8 is fairly comfortable in his routine life. And his personal experience is that he's able to drive now on his own, comfortably on his own during day and night. He feels his read reading vision is quite good and he's able to manage routine activities. He's increased his font size in the phone by a couple of digits. Uh, and he uses reading glasses very selectively only when he has to really fine check, uh, the cross check the bills and accounts uh, at the end of the day. And he uses about plus 1.25 diopter glasses uh, for that fine print reading work that he does. Uh, the concern that we had, this was one of our initial uh, cases, was that because this IOL, these, uh, you know, surface modifying IOLs do have a little bit of changes in the central optic of the IOL, is, does that actually make any difference in the internal aberrations or the quality that which is likely to affect the quality of vision? Uh, and fortunately, this is the uh, uh, eye trace of this patient, which Dr. Samresh taught us that the internal aberrations here, these are coming now from the IOLs and the internal aberrations are absolutely pristine uh, in this patient, which means that the surface modification being done to extend that range of vision isn't actually affecting the quality of vision uh, any which ways. This is the second case of a 64 year old lady. Uh, she actively does stock market trading uh, analysis on her desktop at home. Uh, her husband suffers from chronic debilitating ailments, uh, so he doesn't drive. Uh, so she is the one who takes care of the house. She takes, she drives and uh, uh, runs the home, so everything related to that. Uh, they are very well to do, but the children stay abroad. So only the husband wife uh, stay here. Uh, she has cortical cataracts, hypermetropia, and she had significant astigmatism. Uh, and uh, as uh, has we have learned throughout this course, correcting any amount of astigmatism is absolutely crucial. Uh, so we had a discussion that you do require a uh, toric component uh, in, your, uh, uh, in your eyes. Uh, we decided uh, that because she is doing everything on her own, she wants to be independent, less dependent on glasses, but she cannot compromise on the quality of her vision because she is the one who has to do everything. So we decided for bilateral extended range of uh, lens uh, VVT toric, uh, we decided to target one eye for e-metropia. 
and we discussed that let's see how the outcome for one eye comes and maybe in the second eye if you are comfortable if you are happy we may think of doing a slight myopic offset as dr lawless describes not a true monovision but just a slight myopic uh, shift in the other eye uh, to improve the near vision so this is the actual iol itself it's often it's uh, sometimes very difficult to even see whether this this ring actually exists or this bump actually exists and you may actually miss it for a normal monofocal iol so these are the surface modifications that are done on the vvt which actually help to improve or extend the range of uh, 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 vision from uh, the monofocal component uh, and uh, as this patient required a toric iol uh, we have the digital guidance but um, as dr ramamurthy suggested even manual marking works very well uh, and we could uh, achieve a good outcome uh, in the first eye intraoperatively so at, at three weeks post-op she is 66 parts for distance n8 for intermediate and near uh, and therefore now we thought of playing with the power of the other eye so typically we would have we would have chosen a 22 diopter for this eye for emetropia uh, so we choose the closest to zero the first on the minus side as our routine for all iols so this time we decided let's not make it very myopic but let's try and make it a little bit more myopic so instead of choosing 22 we decided to go ahead with 22.5 for the other eye with a minus 0.5 to uh, post operative target uh, and uh, uh, post operatively this patient has a 6-9 parts vision unaided uh, and her uncorrected near and intermediate is comfortable N6, N8 without too much of extra light. So her binocular performance is excellent quality of vision across all distances, uh, does not need glasses while driving or stock market uh, work that she does on the computer desktop. She does find some difficulty in reading the expiry date on the medicines uh, that she has to give to her husband, particularly in dim light. And for that, she does use uh, reading glasses of about 1.5 diopter. Uh, and there are one or two studies now in literature which do tend to show that if you do a slight uh, sort of myopic offset in the other eye of a good emetropia achieved in the first eye, you may improve marginally the near vision. However, all of these studies do show that for actual fine print reading work, they will not be independent of glasses and they will need uh, uh, readers for fine print. This is the third case of a 52-year-old ophthalmologist, active cataract surgeon with a unilateral cataract, uh, clear lens in the other eye. Uh, and he uh, drives about 150 kilometers a month to another uh, remote place as an operating surgeon at one of the centers. Uh, and he drives himself. So driving is, is important for him, unilateral cataract, uh, young ophthalmologist with a clear lens in the other eye. His biometry and other things were pristine. Uh, he uh, has less experience of uh, implanting multifocals or EDOF in his practice, but he was considering the idea of an extended range of vision lens based on the feedback some of his colleagues have been talking about who have used uh, of one particular brand, um, the iHands, uh, in their practice. But he's still very, very wary because he personally doesn't have much experience and he knows he has a unilateral cataract. So we had a detailed discussion with him regarding the pros and cons. Uh, and finally, after a lot of discussion, we decided that probably uh, an extended range of vision IOL will be a good option for him, keeping in mind that he's active, he's operating, he's likely to continue to be active at least for another couple of, uh, at least one and a half to two decades. And he's going to continue his uh, uh, practice of going once a month to a far off place driving on his own. So we did uh, flags with VVT for him, uh, good distance outcome, and he's quite happy for intermediate uh, and near. Uh, and uh, he's able to operate without difficulty, no problems in highway driving. And he says that uh, when I'm at home, I hardly ever use my glasses. It's only uh, everyone is used to seeing me with glasses uh, in my clinic. So therefore, I wear it for the other eye. But binocularly, when I'm at home, I hardly use uh, any form of glasses even for near. Uh, this is another case of a 73-year-old gentleman, bilateral cataract, retired but very active and very fit. Uh, and on uh, detailed evaluation, he was he was otherwise, uh, you know, very suitable, nice cataract, good biometry, but he had a fine ERM, which is quite common amongst the elderly. So keeping in mind all the things that we have learned in the previous talks, this may not be the ideal candidate for a trifocal technology IOL. 
because of this ERM is likely to compromise the quality or the contrast of vision that this patient is likely to have. So can we consider something other than a monofocal but still not a trifocal? So we thought about it and we uh, discussed with him that probably trifocal is not a good option for him to consider but we did consider the option of an EDOF IOL uh, and we explained to him that he will continue to need uh, reading glasses for fine work and the possibility of the ERM worsening with time, metamorphopsia and so on and so forth. So we did a uh, bilateral uh, uh, VVT for this patient target, uh, targeting e-metropia. Uh, and fortunately, the patient behaved post-operatively as far as his visual outcome goes as a, a normal patient would have behaved without uh, an ERM. So he had a very good distance, intermediate and near uh, 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 acuity without glasses. And he uses uh, 1.25 diopter for fine print reading. So maybe in subtle cases of, uh, of some macular pathologies, uh, uh, EDOF IOLs may be a more forgiving option uh, compared to a trifocal IOLs. And definitely a trifocal IOL is, is a contraindication in this case. And this is another interesting case of a 60-year-old ophthalmologist, again a very active surgeon. We did his one eye in 2017 with a monofocal toric IOL. And he's using progressive glasses for both eyes. Uh, over the last three to four years, the left eye has developed cataract and uh, he himself being uh, very into uh, newer IOLs, newer technology, using it is in, in his own practice. Uh, he was himself forthright and came up with the suggestion that why don't we consider an EDOF in the second eye uh, since I already have good uh, emetropic distance with the first eye. Uh, it would be a good idea if, if I can improve my intermediate and functional near vision. Uh, in the other eye and uh, the experience that he has had with EDA files amongst his patients has been very good as far as the quality of vision goes. So we again had a detailed discussion regarding the pros and cons. We warned him that maybe you know you may find some differences in the quality of vision. We don't know because this is something that is relatively new territory even for us. So do not try to compare vision between the two eyes and you will need to continue to use progressive glasses uh, when it works. And after all the discussion, we went ahead with a uh, EDOF toric, that is a VVT toric with target emetropia in the other eye. Uh, and uh, post-operatively, his, uh, uh, his distance vision is very good. Intermediate is also good, comfortable N6 binocularly. Binocular N6 is with strain, uh, but uh, in the left eye also when we measure, if we add 1.5, it makes it more comfortable across all light ranges and across all font sizes. Uh, he has no problems with his binocular vision or when he compares his two eyes uh, as far as the quality of vision goes and he doesn't find any difficulty in depth perception or anything when he's in the OPD or while operating, uh, uh, which was again a very, very pleasant surprise for us. So I think the take home message from this case is that you can consider EDOF IOLs maybe as a starting point in patients whom you've already done a, a, a monofocal IOL in the other eye. So I think the EDOF IOLs, they deliver what they promise. They give an excellent quality of vision even for precision-oriented individuals. They are compatible with unilateral cataract. No glare, halos, internal aberrations are noted. They give surprisingly good functional near vision with bilateral emetropia. And mini monovision concept, though we are not very, very proponents of that, is something to keep in mind. But keep in mind that they will need use for reading glasses and that could be as high up to 1.5 diopter. There will be some loss of light for near activities uh, and they are likely to work in eyes with relatively mild comorbidities like post LASIK glaucoma ERMs. Uh, of course, this needs more experience. But remember, this is not the IOL for those who do not want glasses. So if somebody wants no glasses, this is not the IOL for them. So once again, I would like to thank the audience for coming to this course and being uh, uh, there right up to the end. Uh, I hope uh, we've been able to convey our message clearly and the discussions that have been generated. Thank you once again to the faculty as well for being